abducted chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria in Michika, local government area of Adama State, Reverend Lawan Andimi, has been said to be killed by Boko Haram terrorists. And the Imo State governorship tussle is still in the news as the All Progressive Congress APC has staged a counter protest to counter that of the opposition party which took place yesterday. This is Plus Politics, and I'm Benny Ark. Boko Haram terrorists have killed the abducted chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria in Michika, local government area of Adama State, Reverend Lawal Andimi. Andimi had been abducted on the 2nd of January, and the video showing him begged the Khan and the government to help set him free made rounds on the 5th of January. The news of his death was confirmed to newsmen by the spokesman for the camp president, Reverend Bayo Ladeji. My question is, how many more people have to lose their lives to this menace before this issue is faced headlong? Joining me to discuss this in-depthly and with the analysis is political analyst Lulu Elegbe. Thank you, Lulu, for joining us this evening. Thank you very much. And also I have with me in the studio Raymond Nkanebe, legal practitioner. Thank you, Raymond, for joining us also this evening. So I'm we're going to have a fair and balanced analysis and uh, contemplation on these issues this evening. Now let's get, let's get started this way. Now the chairman Khan in Michigan, local government um, in Adama State, Reverend Lawan Andimi, was declared missing on January 2nd, 2020. And on the 5th, via a published video, they confirmed that he was in the custody of Boko Haram. What did the state government and federal government didn't do, or what did they do or didn't do right? Yeah, I think <clears throat> the problem with the Boko Haram um, problem is that we've, I think we're at a point where we've become, and when I say we, I mean public and the government. Yes where we've become so, we're so used to it now that it's almost become, we've almost become desensitized to it. So under normal, well, whatever normal looks like yes. these days, um, under normal circumstances, a video of a kidnapped person or a hostage um, talking about how, I mean, I, I saw the transcripts of the video. Um, he talked about how he was, he said he was being fairly treated yes. and things like that. But there was, um, it, Something like that should shock the sensibilities of the country that these things are still happening. But in the scheme of things, when you consider the fact that um, boys have been kidnapped, girls have been kidnapped, students have been kidnapped, um, this in, in, in a way seems like just, quote unquote, just one more. So that's, pro that's one of the reasons why that reaction to something this horrific wasn't there initially. So at, when you say, um, what did the government do or didn't do? It's, they didn't do anything that they've not done in the last few years. Um, I, again, I not, obviously I'm not um, part of the security architecture yes. of the country, but so I don't know what conversations they had or didn't have. But the po my point is, these things happen so frequently. And it, it just seems like a lot of the time, it seems like the only times that we do hear about them is when it involves um, high profile people like this, unfortunately. Yes. And as long as this keeps, as long as we keep hearing Boko Haram has been technically defeated and all these other terms that the government keeps using, this is going to keep happening because you can't tell, you can't go in the news and say Boko Haram has been technically defeated, but then you don't have an answer to, uh, you don't have an answer to things like this. Nobody understands what technically defeated means. Yeah, I was just, I was just going to say that now again, I mean, we, we're at war with insurgents, still, still um, to, to toe your line. Is this an ideological fight, a technical fight as it is? What exactly, what are we worried against? I think because when they first came out, they said mm -hmm. they wanted to, they were against Western education. Mm -hmm. Then there were a whole lot of killings, a yeah. whole lot of kidnapping. Are, are, we, are we at war with an ideology here as it is? Yeah, I think it started as an ideological okay. battle. Yes. That's, that's where it started from, based on, because if you look at, um, I can't remember his name, the founder of Boko Haram, Mohammed Yusuf. Yusuf, 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 the one that was extrajudicially yeah. killed. When they started having this, these conversations about um, Western education, having a problem with it, you can have a problem with whatever you want, yeah. as long as you're not breaking the law in carrying out your protest or whatever it is you're doing, that's fine. But when he started to gather um, followers at the time, and I think the government um, decided to step in to deal with certain things because people were complaining about some of the, the activities and everything just um, 
took everything went pear shaped from yeah. there. And then things got worse once um, they found out he was arrested and killed. And then things took it took on a life of its own. So right now, I don't think I think it's gone beyond the stage of an ideological um, battle or an ideological conflict. It's gone way beyond that now because. Right now, I mean, what is the ideology? The only ideology of, of these guys right now is violence. You yes. can't, because you can't say you're promoting Islam when 90, 95% of your victims are Muslims. It yes. doesn't make any sense. Yes. So that, it, I, I think it started with ideology, but it's gone way beyond that. Beyond that. All right. Raymond, I'm going to come to you the <coughs> beast, but we have Bolaba, a public analyst, joining us all the way live in Dubai. Good evening to you, Bolaba. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to be on your set. And, and thank you for and thank you for joining us this evening, Bilaba. Now, the, the Khan, yes, the Khan chairman in Michika local government area, Damas State Reverend Lawan and Dimi was declared a Mason on January second, and on the fifth we had a video published circulating showing him pleading for the federal government and the state government to come to his aid. And just this morning we heard of his killing yesterday by Boko Haram. What is your thought on all of this happening, Bolaba? The sad reality of the state of our country. Life, human lives, are now worth less than lottery tickets in our country now. It's so sad that we, instead of coming together, to strategically solve it, we now see it more as a partisan, an ideological issue for the ultra conservatives. Forget about the fact that they call themselves progressive politically, for the ultra conservatives to want to stand at the point of saying we don't need to address some constitutional, administrative, and strategic policing issues to attend to this problem, and so on. But I also see opportunistic opportunities to stigmatize the presidency. It is very sad. The reality, as we speak now, is that our president is more of a condoler in chief, not commander in chief. So, so blasts have been taken in social states. The president sends his condolences. So, so person has been killed. The president sends his condolences. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is more of a condoler in chief now. Danny, the commander in chief. All right, well, about this. And fact. Yes. Now, a video, when the video came out about him pleading to the state government and the federal government to come to his aid and have him rescued, um, what do you think at this point in time the federal government or the state government didn't do or should have done at, at the publication of the video where we saw him pleading and asking for help? What, what, what have they done for Leah Sharibu? What have they done for more than 100 Chibok girls? What have they done for those who were previous to the case of this gentleman, God bless his soul, that, you, that we're talking about? What did they do for the charitable souls that went out to give succor to those who were displaced? And we were called the Bukwa. We, the government is practically, practically on, on matters of security in Nigeria now. The government is practically in a cul de sac. Anybody expecting at this juncture any practical solution from this government, I, I, I beg to say, would perform the military. That that person is delusional. Um, I know it's about past ten in Dubai, where you are now. Before we let you go, would you say that the president, Mahmoud Buhari, led government and since its inception has been on top of security issues in the country, knowing that they came on the mantra during their campaign and their mandate that security was one of their focus? 
How would you assess this administration so far when it comes to the issues of security? At some point, uh, at about the time he came into office, when there were major investments uh, for Boko Haram, and when initially Boko Haram was losing sorts of the territory, sorts of a uh, sovereign territory, in which they had their ugly black flags, I was a bit optimistic. But from about the second and a half to third year of the first term, and the fact that he openly confessed to the fact that he would rather prefer his despotic configuration of the chickens of security and the obvious gradual deterioration of the security situation, at one is what is your fear to yourself. And I appreciate it again. You cannot, irrespective of your partisan disposition, and you know I campaigned for Buhari in 2014-2015. The truth is that he, has, he is, on a daily basis, becoming a grandiose failure in the area of security. Yes, I'm glad about and, and I also do remember that sometimes last year or two years ago, you, you also had um, a, an experience. You were also a victim of, of an abduction that happened to you. You, you quickly want to throw I that was in. Yes. You yourself, you've been a victim I, of an abduction. Yes, I was kidnapped. It was not so much an abduction, but a kidnap. And to be honest with you, a kidnap is worse than an, an abduction. I was kidnapped in worry, you know, taken into the jungle, the, the outer periphery of the, of the worry airport on a very rainy day. You know, literally, the vehicle I was in, being, I was, the vehicle I was in being chaperoned by some officials of, of Delta State government was stopped in a place called, uh, what's the name of the town now? And you see, but you see, uh, it's an experience that we want a human being to agree or agree if it has ever happened to you. You can never, I always claim to be a mushy boy, a tough edge. I was, you know, I managed to do the best as I could in the circumstance. But you know what? Many human beings could have lost their lives in the circumstance because it's not, you know, God bless the soul of the, of the departed, the man killed yesterday. So allegedly, or reportedly killed. But it's an experience that is not deserving to this, you know, of any human being. All right, brother, but I will have to let you go. I want to say thank you for joining us on Plus Politics this evening and do have yourself a good night. Thank you very much, brother. Um, I'm most honored and humbled. Thank you for the opportunity. Raymond, let's come to you. I mean, what's your take on this whole situation? Let's, let's have your analysis. Well, uh, my analysis will not be too far from um, what everybody has been saying. Yes. I mean, it's not as complex to... To be uh, to be open to uh, maybe some it's not a, it's not a, it's not a rocket science. I mean, Section 14, sub 2 of our Constitution says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary goal of every government. Yes. So if we should come from that angle, you see, it's an indictment that this government has failed in its primary objective as a government. You understand? Uh, my, my my view is that uh, to the extent that this government can no longer guarantee the security um, uh, of lives and properties, it has already breached its own part of the social contract it had with the citizenry. So um, taking it to the extreme, I, I think we have a fertile ground for uh, for a failed state, as it were, because without security of lives and properties, then there is no basis for the state. Unfortunately, the government has not been able to. They have. They have, they have preferred to live in plausible deniability, you understand? Inviting, uh, uh, using terminologies like uh, technically, technically defeated and all of that. I think if you want to confront terror, we have to actually own up to the fact that you have a problem in your hand and that you can properly, be, uh, you can properly um, uh, meet this problem. But when a part of you, when you, when you uh, when for, maybe for partisan considerations, you have, you have chosen to treat the issue as if it is not uh, it not, it's not a, a serious issue. It affects how you meet, how you meet uh, uh, the, 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 the situation. I mean, I was in Meduguri uh, for 
between 2009 and 2015, yes. I was there when this whole issue uh, 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 pra practically emanated. And it's, it shocks me that several years after graduating from the University of Meduguri, we are still discussing, discussing the same issue. Yes. Leah Sharibu, the Chibo girls, uh, there are so many. Uh, aid workers have been slaughtered and, and nothing is being done. And then people are in Abuja having parties, celebrating and issuing statements every other day. So this government really has to um, rejig the entire security architecture of this country. There have been several calls on Mr. President to get, get some new heads to, with some new visions to see what they can do. These guys have tried, uh, in all fairness to them, they have, they have, they have done their bits. But you, can, you, you don't keep a particular set of persons manning the entire security structure of the country for four, five, six years. I think it's high time he, 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 he gets new men on board and see uh, where we can bring in new, 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 new approach yeah. to, to confronting this right, now, issue. Now, now there have been several mentions. Um, Goloba mentioned it while he was talking. You've also mentioned it now, Leah Sharibu, and we still have 112 girls um, unaccounted for. Sure. And if there, seem, there seems to be a long silence about these girls. And when Lulu was talking, it seems we, we're, we're, we're daily getting desensitized from how grave and, and the magnitude of the issue is. How are we assured of the safety of these girls as it is? Are we even pretty sure they're still alive and well? And what is the failure of the federal government in, in the rescue of the remaining 112 girls and Leah Sharibo? Well, um as to there's the best, a whole lot of silence to about the best this of my knowledge right now. Uh, yes. it's now open to speculation because the government is actually not communicating its activities in that direction and maybe they might say it's because of uh, for security consideration you know you are dealing with um, uh, a group a gorilla a gorilla force we don't even know so you'll be very careful in diverging information as to the, uh, the approach to perhaps negotiating the release of some of these girls remember there were more than that number and a number yes. of them we are, we are, we are we actually uh, rescued. So uh, perhaps the government is keeping those information to itself, but I don't see any serious action being done in that direction other than issuing statements of reassurances that, okay, we'll get the girls back, we'll get the girls back, and then people, the days roll by. Yeah. Lulu, you want to react to this? Yeah. Any thoughts? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's, he's absolutely right because um, with issues like this, there's only so much the government can divulge publicly. I, okay. and I completely understand that. But when um, when nothing happens, um, yes, I can understand the part of not hearing anything, but when that's now followed by nothing happening over a protracted period of time, it starts to give the impression that they are not actually doing not anything. Done, yeah. And it might that might not be the case, but that's unfortunately where there's a lack of information. Rumor will thrive. That's yeah. that's just standard, and that's what's happening right now. So a lot of people that perception has taken root that these guys are not doing anything, they don't care. They, it's, um, I personally don't believe that's true, but that's what it looks like. And you can't blame anybody for having that kind of perception. Now, it's, it's because of this perceived failure mm. by the federal government, um, not being yeah. able to secure people's lives and, and property. Yeah. There's all the killings and kidnapping going on. Mm -hmm. The Southwestern governors came together to, yeah. to establish an operation code named Amotekun. Yeah. And through the office of the AGF, the federal government prescribed the, the security outfit as illegal. Mm. I mean, in, in the light of all what's happening, people need to protect themselves, they need to protect their properties, they need to protect their loved ones. Uh, I'm going to come to the lawyer in the house first. I mean, okay. the, the prescribing of Amote Kun as illegal, okay. you want to react to that before we come to Lulu? Okay, well, um, I agree that we have a serious a, a, a case of emergency in yes. our security, uh, in the security uh, cover of this country. I agree. but. Um, I, two wrongs don't make one right, okay. and you can't put something on nothing. It's a very trite principle in law. I mean, I, I understand that the Southwest acted in a bid to, uh, with a good intention to actually uh, secure their territory. But you see, uh, there's a saying that, that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. You understand? So um, uh, uh, no matter how good intention they, 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 they sought to act or they, they thought they have acted, I think uh, it's breached. It breaches today the, uh, the, the federal structure of this country. You understand? Security, as it were, regional then, security. Then I, beg, then I beg to ask, I mean, yes. on, the, on, the, on the world constitution and law, do we have his bar and JTF operating enough? Thank you very much yes. for that question. You see, um, Section 11 sub 2 of the constitution, you understand, gives states, House of Assembly, to pass laws to enhance the security of lives and properties yeah. within their domain. 
within. The key word there is within their domain. You understand? Now, over 23 states have passed laws in this direction, creating for a semblance of civil security outfits, such as vigilante forces and hisbas we have in Kano State. Yeah. You understand? Now, this security, civil security forces being created, they cannot bear arms. And if they, must, if they must bear arms, they have to comply with, apply, follow the process of getting license to be able to bear arms. So I think the CJTF, uh, the Hizba and the other vigilantist yeah. groups in other states operate under this platform. But Amotekun is a regional network. In between states, the federal government holds sway. Now, there is no separate law that says, as between points, between Lagos and Ogun State, the point between is a no man's land. So if they, if they seek, to, pro, if they seek to, uh, to create a security network that will cover the entire region, that now recedes into the, into the uh, turf of the federal government. It's a concern so much that it's, it's, it's a coalition of states. And if it was done state by state, will they have approved of it? Will it, will it, will it have been accepting? Lulu? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think I disagree with my friend here slightly because, yeah. first of all, I think the issue here, I think the AGF statement was in pretty bad faith, I think because the, the, the Southwest governors didn't just wake up one morning and set up this outfit. There were, there were quite a number of consultations, including with the office of the AGF, including with the presidency, before, before the, any of this ever happened. So that's why it took a lot of people by surprise when the AGF came out last week and said this is illegal, because it almost sounded like he was hearing about this thing for the first time. Now, I understand where he's coming from about the, the Constitution have, having the final say in terms of who provides security sure, nationwide. Yeah. Yes. For states, yes, they can make their own decisions. But remember that because this Amoteku is, yes, it's a regional network. However, each one, remember that that region is made up of individual states. Yes. So the Amoteku itself is restricted. So Amoteku in Lagos, for example, is not, Lagos Amoteku is not going to drive to Akure to go and do something. The ones in Akure are not it, going to drive to It's restricted within the state within of the operation. States, exactly, yeah. but the Amoteku as a group, yes, it is regional. But it doesn't mean that um, somebody from the Amoteku people from one state can go into another state. That's, that's the first thing. The second thing is one of the key components of setting up this group is that they are subordinate to the police. They don't have arrest powers. So I think it was in Ekiti, I was reading yesterday. And also they're not to bear arms. Exactly. You did make mention so of this arms, is, they're also so this not is, to bear arms. So this is something to complement the police. It doesn't replace the police Do you define in arms? Do you, do you define <coughs> arms? Can they bear sticks? Well, arms being guns. Anybody God, can being carry guns, being rifles. Carry sticks. I can carry sticks. <laughs> they can anybody, anybody, with rifles. Yeah. Anybody, well, 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 let me just, let me just say can, something. Let me just say something. Yeah. Let, me, let me say something here, please. You see, I asked a, quest, I asked a colleague a question. Is Amote Kun as it were today, mm. is it a legal entity? What do you mean legal entity? Can, it, can you sue Amote Kun in court and can Amote Kun sue in court? Can you sue G civilian JTF in court? Of course. They are, they are created by the State House of Assembly. Exactly. Amote Kun is not a creation of law as of today. It is not established by statute. So, which is the it difference is not between it by and every other existing security outfit? Is that it is not, it is not a legal entity. Okay. That is to say, if you, you if if Amotekun uh, operatives get mm -hmm. involved in a civil dispute with a member of the public, mm -hmm. they can when they sue Amotekun in court, the suit will be struck out because Amotekun is unknown to law. It's yeah, not a but creation then you don't sue Amotekun of law. as a group. You sue whoever it is that you are. So it's, and this is and this is the I think this is. This is part of the legal issue with yeah. this Amotekun setup yes, because yes. at the end of the day, it's not the, the Ekiti one I was talking about. I can't remember what the person was supposed to have done, but after they caught the guy, they handed him over to the police. So that tells you that the, the idea behind this is not to replace the police, is not to, it's actually to help the police. They are not trying to say that because we've come here, we're not going, we're going to do X, Y, Z that the police should be doing. But if, if we're going to be serious about security, then we need to be serious about community policing, which is exactly what these guys are doing. Because police, the, the decision makers, the police decision makers in Abuja cannot know what is happening in Ilaje town, in Ondo State, better than the people that live in, in, in Ilaje town. So when you have the Amotekun people there, they have a lot more intelligence, they have a lot more understanding of their own individual communities. And that intelligence is what they now use to help the police to make their own job mm. easier. At the end of the day, that's what all this is. I agree. That's really I, I what agree. It is. The intention, of course, we cannot debate <coughs> the, 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 the intention. It's yeah. actually to enhance 
security. Now, Raymond, let me ask you, police. while you were speaking, you said Amatoko as a stance today is not a legal entity. Yeah, yeah. What will qualify to become a legal entity? Thank you very much. If passed by the National Assembly, the, approved the by the National House, Assembly? The state, state, the state yeah. housing, these five or six states in the Southwest, should go back to come together, agree on the template of this security uh, outfit. When they agree on the template, let them go to their respective houses of assembly and pass it in the house in the and pass it into law in their house of assembly, and then it becomes a creation of it becomes a legal entity. Then they can operate whichever way they want to. Okay. As of today, it is not a creation of law. It's not a legal entity. It is not an artificial person. And in court of law, any action against it will be struck out. Oh, and that we have we have a dead con chairman in our hands right now as a result of Boko Haram killing and killing him. Now more than twenty seven thousand people have been killed by by this said group, and we have over two million people displaced from their homes by this same group. Now isn't it time we consider the issue of state policing critical and serious at this point in time? <laughs> Lulu, yeah, it's I have very mixed feelings about, about state police to be honest why? because my. While I, I think it's a good idea in theory, okay. because if we're a true federal republic, then that's what it should be anyway. There should be a state police. However, my, I think my hesitation with state police has always been the kind of influence that, say, the governors or powerful people within the states have on them. That's, that's always been really what my issue is. But again, there are ways around this thing. So, but because of the way the security architecture in the country currently is, I'm not sure there's any other viable solution but a state police. I, th I, I don't see any, because this Amotekun thing we're talking about, for example, is a clear indication that, you know what, a state police is actually what will help in these situations. Because like I said, the, the IG or whoever does the, re the deployment of police officers, he's just doing it based on, okay, you go, you go here, you go there. You, you're gonna send a commissioner of police well, from federal somewhere. Character yeah, principle exactly. In the process. Be, but you're sending a commissioner to Lagos who doesn't have a clue, who's probably never been to Lagos It'll before. Be from the north. And this, uh, so by the time you do this, yes, he, I mean, he's a professional, so he'll, he'll get up to speed with the job and all those things. But imagine if what you're doing is actually using policemen that are within the communities. They have a much better understanding of the dynamics of that communities. In some cases, they probably know the most likely people to commit crimes within those communities. That makes everybody's lives easier. So this idea that um, everything must go through Abuja, I mean, we're, we're, not, we're not running a proper federal republic based on that. I mean, look at mm. the US, that's what the US is. Every state in the US, for example, yeah. has their own individual police. police then you yes. have the FBI that, uh, that, um, that has it's that. It's, it's federal, federal. yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, um, the killing of the clergyman, it's, it's a clear, it sends a clear signal. And yeah. we might not be seeing the end of such killings. There have been series of reported kidnapping and attacks lately in, in Kaduna and Plateau. Yep. What should the administration of President Mahmoud Buhari at this point in time be focusing on? Well, uh, I think uh, what, I think the, yeah, well, we've only seen the administration call the security summit with the heads of security, different security uh, outfits, having a meeting, sharing information, briefings on what should happen. Uh, I think we've been having this. We've been having this conversation off and on. For me, I think um, that the conversation is necessary. We we need to have this no, conversation. I mean, within yes. the, I mean, within the security, uh, within the security, uh, um, uh, within the security organizations. Okay. Buari has met with them severally. I'm saying that they have tried. We've seen the limits of what they can do. Bring in new heads. Let them perhaps put their own uh, uh, ideas and see if we can get a different result. You understand? Instead of after every attack, after every serious attack, yes. you call for a security meeting. After that, you address pressmen, and then we return to business as usual. It doesn't take us anywhere. All right, thank you, Lulu Elegbe, political analyst, and Raymond Nakenebe, legal practitioner. Thank you for your analysis and contribution in this segment. Thank you, very much. Thank you for staying with us. The protest staged by the APC to counter that of the PDP is up for discussion next. Do stay with us.